Don't know if you saw this, but recently DJI did a thing where they published annual reports for their users. Now, lots of companies make these at the end of the year. Spotify makes one. You've probably seen your annual playlist. I took a look at my annual report and there was one stat from 21 that really took me by surprise. It definitely caught my eye. According to DJI, I used my Air 2S here more last year in 2021 than 94% of DJI's drone user base, 94%, which to me is really strange because I didn't use a drone at all the first six months of the year. Then I picked up an Air 2S in June and I did use it a fair bit on trips to Oregon, Iceland, Utah. I've made videos about those trips here on my channel. Either something is off with DJI's data and they're counting zeros from people who've opted out of sharing their data or the majority of people owning drones in 2021 didn't use them all that much. Which, I don't know, if true is kind of sad. So I think it's a good time to post a video about how to create better aerial photos and videos using filters on your drone to help you get out and start using that drone more. For demonstration purposes, I will be using DJI Air 2S filters made by Freewell, including solid neutral density filters, also known as an ND filter, hybrid ND filters, variable ND filters, variable ND diffusion mist filters, and a circular polarizer. In full disclosure, Freewell provided me with all of these filters. However, they have not sponsored or paid for this video. You will also hear in this video my honest opinion and experience using filters like these on a drone when they work well and when they don't work so well. All right, so without further ado, let's begin with aerial photography. My thing is landscape photography, and I just find drones to be really helpful when a better composition can be found by getting the drone higher off the ground than what you're able to get by you know just using a camera and a tripod. I think they're also wonderful for capturing just a completely different perspective of a landscape that would otherwise be nearly impossible to photograph. The best filter for aerial photography, man, these things are so small, in my opinion, is the circular polarizer. Now, Freewell includes a circular polarizer in their all day eight pack, which is this collection of filters here. Or you may buy one separately if that's the only filter you want, or if you happen to lose one of these uh, from the eight day pack and you need to replace it. Circular polarizers are fantastic because they magically improve color saturation and clarity by removing atmospheric haze, reflections from water, glass, rocks, and other reflective surfaces. And they can be especially helpful, I have found, in aerial photography when shooting landscapes or cityscapes, for subjects can oftentimes be very far away from the camera, which makes them hazier and reduces their clarity. And using a filter like this will help bring some of that back. However, a word of caution. If you've never used a circular polarizer before, know that circular polarizers can sometimes do rather weird and unexpected things, especially when used on wide angle lenses, which is effectively the type of lens that drones use. Now, depending on the angle of the sun and the angle of the polarizer, how you have this turned here, you can sometimes get a rather ugly gradient effect in the sky where part of the sky gets noticeably darker. I'll be talking more later on in this video about choosing a proper angle for the circular polarizer to help you avoid that problem. Okay, but what about neutral density filters with aerial photography? Well, unless you're trying to get a long exposure shot using a very slow shutter speed, which is a pretty tricky thing to do considering, I mean, a drone is after all, a camera flying around and bumping around in the wind. Neutral density filters, in my opinion, are best avoided when creating aerial images. And the reason why is because ND filters are designed to reduce light and darken exposure. And because drones like this Air 2S here have a fixed aperture value of f2.8, meaning it can't get any larger or smaller, and its ISO can get rather noisy above 400, shutter speed is the only tool in the exposure toolbox that you can use to brighten exposure. And if you brighten exposure by slowing the shutter, well, the harder it is for the drone to capture sharp images because, well, again, it's a flying camera. So, for example, here's a photo of mine from Iceland where I mounted an ND filter on the Air 2S because I was shooting video. But then I switched to photo mode because I saw something I wanted to create a still image from. Unfortunately, my exposure settings were boxed in by the ND filter and the slow shutter speed caused the birds flying over the water here to turn out blurry. 
So with aerial photography, in my experience, the higher the shutter speed, the better. You don't want to be doing anything that is going to be slowing down the shutter. I've been affected by that too many times. So with that, well, what are ND filters good for then? Well, the answer is video. All right, so as explained earlier, ND filters reduce light and darken exposure, which forces the shutter in the camera to use a slower speed. This is exactly what many videographers and filmmakers want because it allows them to follow the 180 degree shutter rule. Now you've probably heard of this before. It's simply a technique where motion in video appears most natural and similar to what the human eye is accustomed to seeing by setting the shutter speed to one over the video frame rate multiplied by two. For example, if you were shooting 4K video at 30 frames per second, the optimum shutter speed for that frame rate would be 1 60th of a second. But what is the practical benefit of this rule? Well, here's a video, again from my recent trip to Iceland, where I used an ND filter to achieve 1 50th of a second shutter in the middle of the daytime with a frame rate of 24 frames per second. All right, so now that you know the benefit of using ND filters to slow down shutter speed when capturing video, the question then is, should you always follow this rule? The 180 degree shutter rule where you match the shutter speed to the frame rate. Is that something you should always do? Well, in my opinion, no. And I say that because I have fallen into this trap of believing that I must always follow the 180 degree shutter rule in order for my videos to appear higher quality and more professional. In general, I think it's a good rule of thumb, but unless there is something in your shot, a subject that is moving quickly or the drone itself is going to be moving quickly, the viewer is not going to notice that much of a difference in shutter speed, whether it's 1 50th of a second or 1 2 50th of a second, especially in footage like this, which honestly I create more of for my channel than anything where the camera is moving slowly. As a matter of fact, I'm always trying to get the, the drone to fly even slower. I have also created videos like these where I followed the rules. I used an ND filter to achieve a slow shutter speed, but mid flight uh, had to bump my ISO because the light dropped. And in doing so, I introduced a ton of noise because the ND filter was in the way. My recommendation, pre-visualize your shot ahead of time, prior to takeoff, before you get the drone in the air, to determine whether motion blur is even needed, whether motion blur is going to make your shot better and whether the viewer would even notice. If so, if the answer is yes, then yeah, use an ND filter and match that shutter speed to your frame rate using the 180 degree shutter rule. If not, Honestly, you may be better off just not using one, especially if you are using a fixed aperture drone like the Air 2S. All right, so let's say that you're in the field and you decide that yes, you do want to use an ND filter. Great. Should you use then a solid ND, a variable ND, or a hybrid ND? I'm uh, being rather OCD about this and I'm trying to get uh, the filters perfectly lined up, but anyway, solid ND filters are the simplest and that's because they use a single pane of glass that is darkened by a fixed amount. Then we have the hybrid ND, which is a combination of a solid ND with a circular polarizer and they have names like ND4PL, ND8PL, does what we talked about earlier by removing reflections and atmospheric haze and improving overall clarity. Variable NDs use two panes of darkened polarized glass with one pane that is rotating uh, over the other. You probably own a variable ND right now. These filters darken uh, your exposure between a minimum and maximum density, typically uh, two to five stops or six to nine stops, which are the two types of variable NDs for the Air 2S that Freewell offers. The Diffusion Mist Variable ND, which I believe at the time of this video is unique to Freewell. I don't think anyone else is currently making these. These are effectively the same as the variable NDs, except these have an added effect that uh, diffracts and and uh, and blooms and diffuses light. It creates a halation effect with uh, bright light in your shot. So for example, video like this where the sun is setting, it just creates a really nice soft look and I think just adds some atmosphere and some and some vibe to the shot that wouldn't be there if you were using a regular ND filter or if you weren't using any ND filter at all. Another thing that variable 
uh, or rather diffusion mist filters are good for is for taking some of that digital edge off of the sensor because DJI drones like this one, like the Air 2S, they do have a fair bit of sharpening and having a diffusion mist filter just kind of softens it down just a little bit and just makes the image, I think, look a little more natural and a little less digital. So outside of sharpness, how else do these uh, Andy filters for the Air 2S made by Freewell, how else do they compare qualitatively? Well, to find out, I captured both photos and videos in a controlled lighting setup with the drone here facing just a neutral background with a, a fixed light source at a fixed color temperature so that you and I can more easily see the difference between each filter. And with that, here is a control image captured without a filter and with the color temperature set to a fixed value of 5600 Kelvin. I then mounted a solid ND from Freewell, slowed the shutter speed down, took another image, and that's the one you see here. Now, the fact that the solid ND image looks so similar to the control is actually a good thing, a very good thing, actually, for it means that the Freewell solid ND is darkening exposure without affecting color, without introducing color cast. Now, by the way, in case you're curious to know, how these Freewell solid NDs compared to the solid NDs that are made by DJI. I uh, own those as well. I have them right here. I test them out. And in my tests, when I looked at the difference between them, the solid NDs made by DJI introduce quite a bit of magenta. It's something that I just didn't notice before when I was using them in the field. But now that you can see them side by side, it's pretty clear, I think, that the Freewell glass is uh, superior, is just better than what DJI is using in theirs. All right, let's take a look at the hybrid NDs. Now, to remind you, a hybrid ND is a combination of a solid ND with a circular polarizer. It is effectively a darkened polarizer. And something that I noticed when looking at images and videos captured using the hybrid NDs and the variable NDs is that there is color cast. It introduced kind of a warming tint to the image that is very similar to other Freewell uh, filters that I've used, including their magnetic VND system, which I reviewed recently here on my channel and, I, and I've put into use. I use those filters all the time. You may also notice with the hybrid NDs, some darkening around the corners and edges of the frame. And this is a byproduct of how the polarizer filter works because it is filtering out particular angles of light and it is uh, filtering the light in such a way so that exposure values are no longer even from edge to edge and corner to corner, as you would see when not using a filter at all on the drone or when using a solid ND. Now, when you're using the filter, you can see which angle the filter here is rotated to because there is a white tick mark on the outside of the filter. And I think a good way to think about this tick mark and to think about the front of the filter is to think of it, you know, kind of like the face of a clock. For a shot like this with the sun at far right, reflections are removed from the water and clarity is improved when the white tick mark is straight up at 12 o'clock, which is more or less a 90 degree angle relative to the sun. When rotated to three o'clock, the filter's effect is minimized and more stray angles of reflected light are allowed to pass through. Rotated once again to six o'clock and we're back at a 90 degree angle once again. Rotate again to nine o'clock and yep, you guessed it, we're back at the polarizer's uh, weakest angle. And so now the reflections have been minimized once again. And this is where things get you know, kind of a little strange with using circular polarizers and hybrid NDs on drones, because say if you are using a circular polarizer with your camera on a tripod on the ground, which is what you may be accustomed to, well, it's not that big of a deal to dial in just the right angle, however much or however little of the effect that you want by looking at the preview on the back of the camera and your camera's stationary, it's not going anywhere. Well, the weird thing about a drone is that you know, unless your drone is flying like in a straight linear path, like relative to the angle of the sun, you're not planning on changing direction at all. Well, the direction of the drone is going to be constantly changing while you are flying. So it's, you know, how strong or how weak the effect of the, uh, of the filter is entirely dependent on the angle of the drone, like which way it's facing. And I don't know about you, but oftentimes I don't know where the drone is going to be going when I get it up in the air. I kind of have an idea. But sometimes you might, you know, you, you change directions all the time, unless you absolutely know where it's going, then it makes sense to be, you know, trying to dial this in yourself. But what Freewell has done here, just to make it a bit simpler um, and to remove some of the, some of the questioning around that is there's a white tick mark on the base of the, of the filter here. And this goes for the circular polarizer too. And you just turn this thing until the white tick marks line up. 
And when you do that, then the filter is at a 90 degree angle, you know, like relative to the sun being to the east or to the west, and it should provide the effect that you're looking for. But you may see some of that cross polarization as you are rotating and moving the drone and changing direction when you have one of these mounted. Then we have the variable NDs, and here's where things get a little more complicated. Both of the variable NDs made by Freewell perform their best at their lowest density values because as their density increases and the light gets darker, there is a noticeable amount of cross polarization that creeps in and darkens the image. Now, in my opinion, an effect like this wouldn't be so bad if the darkening was evenly distributed around the entire frame, similar to say like a vignette effect. But this darkening is at opposite corners. It's like at a 45 degree angle, which doesn't look natural. And unfortunately it degrades the overall image quality. So how does this look with a practical video shot outdoors? Well, here's some footage that I, just some test footage that I recently captured. This is a control video that has no filter at all. And now a variable ND. Now, granted, this light was pretty difficult to be shooting video in because it was a bright, clear day with no clouds in the sky and the sun was rather harsh and strong, so I was really kind of pushing these filters here. But I have found that even on a cloudy, overcast day with evenly distributed light, you can still affect to see some effects of cross polarization with the variable NDs when they were set to their heaviest densities, and you occasionally see that effect as well with the hybrid NDs. All right, so we have covered a lot of ground here. Let's recap, I'm trying to line these up just right, just again. Uh, let's recap these qualitative comparisons. Solid ND filters, like this one here, they produce the cleanest image and they are unaffected by the angle of the sun. So cross polarization is not a concern. These filters darken exposure and nothing more. However, they are more work because these filters have to be swapped anytime you want to change densities, anytime you want a heavier or lighter uh, ND filter. Hybrid filters are interesting because sometimes they can qualitatively outperform the solid NDs when reflections and highlight detail are a concern and you want to improve clarity because that's not something a solid ND can do but they are more temperamental and somewhat unpredictable depending on how they are angled relative to the sun. And then changing that angle is not something you're gonna be able to do once the drone is up in the air, unless you bring it back, of course, land it, rotate it once again, and all that. Variable ND filters compared to solid are simpler and faster because you can just dial in. You can just change densities without swapping filters right on the filter while it is mounted on the drone, which is fantastic when you know, you're moving quickly and you're not being too overly particular about image quality. If you do choose to use Freewell variable NDs, and this goes for both types, just the regular VND and the mist VND, I would always recommend using the first couple of densities for the least amount of cross polarization and darkening. And that would be again, two to three on the two to five stop and six and seven on the six to nine stop. And then thereafter, you would make adjustments to your shutter speed and or your ISO in order to make up the difference with your exposure. Personally, in case you're wondering where I land with all this, like what would I use with my drone? I prefer using solid NDs because I think they're simpler, they're more predictable, they're more of a known quantity, I guess. Uh, you could say for general purpose use, I just prefer using solid NDs. Now Freewell does include two solid NDs with this uh, all day eight pack that I was talking about earlier, but the solid NDs that are in here are very strong. They are 10 and 11 stops respectively, and they are intended mainly to be used for those rare moments where you may be trying to do some long exposure photography with the drone. Freewell does sell some weaker density solid NDs separately, ND4, ND8, ND16, ND32, similar to the filters that DGI sells, but they are all sold individually and not as a bundle. That is something that uh, personally, I would love to see Freewell offer. It's just like a, a pack of their solid NDs that you could buy at a discount. Also, I'd love to see Freewell or anyone else for that matter, uh, offer a standalone diffusion mist filter just for general use, because right now diffusion mist is only available in the variable ND. I think having a just a general diffusion mist filter with no darkening would be helpful in situations where you wanna shoot video and you don't really need to be bringing down your exposure. You don't want to affect 
Uh, you don't want to be adding any darkening to your shot. And I think it might also be an interesting filter for still photography because oftentimes I find myself with raw images from the Air 2S pulling down that clarity slider just a little bit in order to take some of that digital edge and sharpening uh, some of that micro contrast off of the image. And I just find there's something about it that just softens up the image just a touch. And I think a diffusion mist filter could accomplish the same. So I would love to see just a general diffusion mist uh, with no ND, uh, just something you could put on the drone and I'll be using for both photos and videos. And by the way, in general, in case you're concerned about these filters from Freewell here, like interfering with uh, the operation of the gimbal in some way, I haven't had any problems with them at all. The one thing I would recommend though, is that if you are taking filters on and off the drone is to power the drone on and off uh, in between those changes. Because if the drone is on and you start kind of, you know, handling this gimbal here and you start twisting it around and doing all that stuff, it tends to get a little screwy and it gets a little confused and then it gets up in the air and you start getting gimbal errors and you have to bring the drone back. So it's easier, I think, just power it off, change the filters, power it back on, and then put it up in the air again. Thanks once again to Freewell for providing me with all of the filters found in this review. If you'd like to check out the Freewell filters, all the different filters that I've reviewed and talked about here, I will link to them down below so you can check their current prices. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, <coughs> excuse me, and um, I've been talking a while, um, and if you'd be uh, interested in checking out more videos from me in the future, please feel free to subscribe uh, to this channel if you haven't done so already. I'm gonna go drink some water and uh, I will see you next time.